We're going to talk about the kind of the basics of perfusion today. And what we're going to talk about is delivery and consumption of oxygen, which essentially is what our main role is. Uh, it's our job to deliver the nutrients to the cells. What we're going to talk about first, and we, we covered this last week, is that scale. So the first part of the scale is supply over here and demand. And if you remember, last week we talked about the different things that make up demand. What are they? Somebody throw out some of the things that change, the, the, either something that we can change or something that we can't change about the demand. What's our patient tell us? What are some things? Body, body size. size. Okay, Psst. patient size, body size. What else? Temperature. Temp. What else? Age. Anesthetic depth. Gender. Gender. Age. Anything else? We're missing a, a real important one. Think in terms of a sumo wrestler or Arnold Schwarzenegger. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, body composition, right? <clears throat> Okay, now we talked about this as well. Of all these things, when your patient comes into you, which ones of these are kind of something that we can't manipulate? Can we manipulate the body size? No. no. Can we manipulate the gender? No. no. Can we manipulate the age? No. Can we manipulate their body composition? No. That leaves us anesthetic depth and temperature. Those are the two things that we can manipulate. Now. Temperature, we use to our advantage all the time, right? Can we control anesthetic depth? We can while we're on bypass, but otherwise that has to be a communication between the surgeon, the anesthesiologist, and the perfusionist. That makes sense to everyone on the demand side. You can see now we can't manipulate the demand side a lot, right? This is perfusion. We can't manipulate the demand side a lot. The things that we can control are anesthetic depth and our temperature. Ultimately, the patient's going to start normothermic, and we have to return them to normothermia before. So really, while we can use that in surgery, we can use temperature, we have to return them back the same way with anesthetic. But during the procedure, we can control that. Okay, supply. What are the things we can control on supply? I want to write the, the most important thing up there first, which is what? Flow. 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 flow, flow, flow. Flow is always the answer. Flow is always the best answer. If you don't know the answer, put flow. You're probably not wrong a lot of times. <laughs> Uh, what's the other uh, main thing that we can control about the supply? It, think thick, because we're going to draw thick up next. The hemoglobin level, right? So our H and H. So hemoglobin, hematocrit. We can control those things. So controllable, controllable. What is the third thing, but we're going to talk about maybe not as important as the other two? What is that? So our saturation of oxygen, right? We've got to deliver oxygen. So. Our oxy sat. Now, um, I want to talk about oxy saturation for one second. You guys have studied the oxy saturation hemoglobin already. You're not. You're. You're probably not at that stage yet where you know it by heart. But we're going to just talk about it for a second. You have your oxy saturation hemoglobin curve, and if you remember, it's kind of a logarithmic S shape. And basically, what that tells us down here, if you're at 25 percent you're on the bottom end, edge of the curve. But up here, basically anything above 75%-ish, there are small, small changes above a saturation of 75%, uh, which basically tells us that once you're saturated with oxygen, small, small changes have little effect. So as long as we're providing enough oxygen, we don't have to provide an extraneous amount. We don't want to hit our patients with hyperoxia. Hyperoxia causes brain damage, causes damage to cells with things called oxygen-free radicals. Those are superoxide, ozone, ethoxide, uh, carbon monoxide. They're high doses of oxygen that cause damage to the cells. They're cancer-causing agents. We talked also about giving mannitol to scavenge those oxygen-free radicals. So what, how, what's appropriate oxygenation? We've talked about this, we've talked about it with David. Where do we want to stay? Do we want to stay at 75? No. Do we want to stay at 100, 150? Yeah. Can we push it up to 300 for small amounts of time? Yeah, to make sure we're on the safe side. What we don't want to do is continually be in that 300 to 500 range over a long period of time because we know there's no effect on that. 
Liz, do you want to come up and draw up the Fick equation and then let's talk uh, through the Fick equation and why this is so important. So Fick equation tells us basically this is something that deals with our oxygen delivery, right? Which this is a constant balance we talked about with the scale. This is a constant balance that we have to keep in uh, in, in balance where our supply meets our demand. We have to keep the scale correct and in balance. Go ahead and draw a complete thick and then we'll talk about modified thick. Good. Good. Thank you. <coughs> How'd she do? Is that it? That is thick law or thick equation. Okay, so let's break it down a little bit based on what we talked about with our scale. This is perfusion, guys. This is delivery of oxygen to the mitochondria. This is what our primary responsibility is. You can talk about cell seven, you can talk about PRP, you can talk about bone marrow, you can talk about everything else, but this, this is what perfusion is. Thick talks about our oxygen delivery to cells. Here's a constant. We cannot manipulate this constant. It's, a, it's the amount of oxygen that one hemoglobin molecule can hold. Can we manipulate the hemoglobin? How do we manipulate the hemoglobin? What are the ways? We can give bank blood. Best option? I would say, is bank blood the best option? Oh, no. It's not the best option. It's a total body transplant. We talked about the the uh, red cells and also the red cells viability, depending on age, you lose 50% of your efficacy every seven days. Our average blood is about 17 days old. That uh, bank blood is about 25% or less efficacious. It, it's not a great option. What did you say is the better option? Auto transfusion, giving the patient their own cells back. And what's maybe even a better option when we're on bypass, if we have plenty of volume? Hemoconcentration, get fluid off, dialysis. Use dialysis on bypass, essentially get rid of the, the clear volume and keep the hemoglobin high. That's how we manipulate the hemoglobin. Sometimes though, you get the little old lady who doesn't have enough hemoglobin, uh, 85 years old, they need higher pressures, they need higher hemoglobin, they just don't have enough red cells. They have kidney disease, their erythropoietin has been low, but we will do everything we can. We may have to give that uh, lady blood to get them on bypass and off bypass. What is the number one answer to everything else of this equation that we can mani manipulate? flow. We can turn this flow up. Generally, we're going to say, just for easy math, 5 liters or 5,000 cc's. We can, we can manipulate how fast the bus is driving. Flow is how fast the bus is driving. Hemoglobin is how many people are on the bus to deliver the oxygen, right? That's how, what, how we're delivering. Flow is how fast. Here's, the, here's how this equation works. So if we go 1.34 here, we're going to say hemoglobin of 10. That gives us a hematocrit of 30, just for a round number, right? Okay, our SVO2 minus our SAO2. Our SAO2, our oxygenators are so unbelievably efficient. They're almost, we can almost guarantee a 99 to 100% SAO2 coming out of our oxygenator, going into our patient. If an oxygenator's failing or if this and that, we can discuss that later, but we're almost gonna guarantee this is 100. What's a good SVO2? What's a good venous saturation that we want to keep our patients at? 70, 75, let's say, say 75. So that gives us 25. Somebody with a calculator. What is 1.34 times 10 times 25 times 5,000? What's this number, this total number of thick? Anybody have it? Sixteen seventy-five. What is it? Sixteen seventy-five. But I put flow in liters. Okay, so let's do this. Sixteen seventy-five. One million six hundred seventy-five thousand. Okay, here's what we talked about last week, and this is what's vitally important, and this is why we can use this equation, but we kind of change the equation and we call it modified fit. What modified fit does is it shows us how important hemoglobin over here and flow are to this equation and really 
if as long as we're above 75% saturation, so say we're at 150 or, or 300, how little this has an impact on the equation. Now, this part of the equation right here is important. This is a plus sign. And we're gonna take our PO2 times 0 0.003. So let's say, let's say our PO2 is 500. Let's say it's 500. Somebody do 500 times 0 0.003. If our PO2 is 500. 1.5. What is it? 1.5. Times 0.003 is 1.5. What if it's 150? How much does that change? Five, 150 times 1.5. What is it then times 0 0.003? 225. 220.225? Uh, what is it? Is it 1.5 times? 150 times 0 0.003. 0 0.45. 0 0.45. 0 0.45. So in this equation, you're taking 1,675,000 plus this part of the equation from 150 to 500 is the difference between 1.5 or 0.45. Extremely negligible, right? So the modified fit says, hey, as long as you stay on the upper side of the oxysaturation hemoglobin curve, we don't even need to add that part in because it's negligible. As long as you stay saturated with oxygen, as long as you're delivering oxygen, it all comes down to our flow and our hemoglobin. Does that make sense to everybody? Does that make, does that kind of allow us to, to look through FIC and see why this is so important? That's the cool part of perfusion. That's the cool part of what it is that we do. We can manipulate this. When we're in surgery, you're running thick in your head all the time. You're running this equation in your head all the time, yet you're not calculating. But you're making that decision based on what your hemoglobin level is, based on what your flow is, based, based on what your oxygen demand is of your patient and the things that you can manipulate and the things you can't. You're constantly running thick. You're constantly doing that because that's what perfusion is. Does that make sense to everybody? We're gonna talk through this six or eight times throughout this semester. We're always gonna to refer to, to this fit, and I'm gonna challenge you. What do you do in this scenario? Sometimes you're gonna be wrong and sometimes you're gonna be right, but I want you to really have a great understanding of how this works before we kind of move on with the semester. That sounds good? Everybody good?